They're a team that love to play beautiful football, but now it's time to get the results on the board as Newcastle Jets look to make that move into the A-League's top six. Former Jets striker Roy O'Donovan, will this be the year they take the next step? They'll hope so. Um, it's going to be difficult. You talk about they play beautiful football. Yeah, I heard a lot of that last year about their change in the style of football and it's a style of football that hasn't been seen in Australia before. Um, they finished ninth, you know. They spent a huge amount of money last year and it, they didn't deliver. And, you know, this year they've signed a whole new team in the off-season, 11 individuals, some good sprinkling of names in there. Uh, Carl Jenkinson, obviously, Played at the very highest level. Brandon O'Neill um, won everything in Australia. Very good player. But they've lost, for me, one of the best attacking midfielders of the last number of years in Daniel Pena. He was the only one, for me, last year that opened up that kind of, um, you know, uh, that, that door, really, uh, to score goals. He played forward passes when everybody else was playing it safe, five yards side to side. He was the one who was splitting defences and he was a striker's dream, really. So, huge loss, hard to replace. And, um, yeah, look, for me, as a former Jets player, I want want him to do well, be back in the six this year. But, um, yeah, just this wholesale change is going to be, it's not going to be easy. Have they done enough to replace Pena? Well, they've signed Reno Piscopo. Um, now, whether they play him in a wide role or more centrally, I, I, I don't know. But, you know, he's certainly got the ability. I, I like him very much as a player. In fact, I think they've, they've made... Three key signings, and, and Roy mentioned that they've lost Daniel Pena. That's true. They've also lost Olivier Bumal, who I liked. I know he was a bit up and down towards the end of the season, had some injury problems. Valentino Yule has gone yeah. as well. So they've almost lost, <clears throat> you know, three of their four uh, fronts, front part of the pitch. Um, Piscopo is, is one key signing. I think he can replace the creativity, at least to an extent, of Daniel Pena. I think Brandon O'Neill is, is a key acquisition uh, at times, they they lacked control in midfield, um, you know, particularly with Pena going forward and sort of having that free role. You needed the stability behind him. I think Brandon O'Neill might provide that. And last season, they conceded way too many goals. That was their big problem. Carl Jenkinson is not the answer, but I think he's part of the answer. He will give that experience defensively, uh, along with Jordan Elsie and, and Matt Yerman in the centre. So... I think it's you know it's got potential that that squads, but they've got to find consistency. They're certainly not alone in that in the A League. There's a lot of clubs that you know struggle to put it together week in week out. Um, but I think he's got the raw ingredients there, and of course he's also brought in another Georgian, Becca Dartsmelia, to keep uh, uh, Becca Mikkeltadze company. So he should be happier, and obviously we know he can provide goals as well. So I'm pr perhaps a little bit more optimistic than Roy. I think that they can certainly challenge for the top six. Fantasy players beware with the two Beckers when you're picking your team, but what is the key to that consistency? 11 players to embed, big challenge, but also the consistency needed to stop leaking goals the other way. What's the biggest challenge for Arthur Pappas? To yeah, for me, last year, they, they played a very high defensive line, so that's great if you've got the players to cover all that space you're leaving behind. And There's a lot of fast players in the A-League, but Matt Jorman... And, and Jordan Elsie playing a high line on the halfway line, that's danger. Um, you know, they're very good defenders. They can win all their headers. They're, they're, they're tough. They make great tackles. But what they don't want to do is run. So last year, I saw Newcastle Jets play Melbourne Victory and Central Coast Mariners. They absorbed all the pressure. And the once or twice, they gave away the ball. Mariners, Victory, chipped the ball over the top. Bang. D'Agostino scores a great goal. Uh, Benny Ancolo scores a great goal for Mariners. So... I don't want to see that happen again this year. I want them to be a bit more, you know, uh, resolute in their defending, not so blasé about it, stepping up for their attacking football. Going forward, Bahajer, Soterio, if you use right, uh, could be absolute game changers for Newcastle Jets. That pace. Roy, I want to ask you about Arthur Pappas. He's very much a coach in the mould of Ange Postacoglu, obviously at a different level. Mm -hmm. um, is he too wedded to that approach? Does he need to be a little bit more flexible? You just mentioned that the high defensive line to cope with the players that he has at his disposal. Absolutely, you have to. You have to play your personnel. That, for my opinion, you can't. Okay, you learn from Ange, but you can't mold yourself and be a second version of Ange. And I'm not sure that's what he's trying to do either. By the mm. way, but uh, but yeah, he, he's a, he's a he's a manager. Spent a lot of money last year, a lot of change at the club. He's under pressure this year to to show success, some success. Get, get the supporters back in the ground, which they haven't got. Um, he needs to be his own man, standing on his own two feet, which I, I, I think he is. But uh, he needs results now. 
the talk the time for talking is over. They need results, and and it's a big enough club with enough quality on the park to uh, to really make a challenge this year. But it can it can, it could go either way. The Jets faithful love their football. You alluded earlier to what the front three could be like if it clicks. And we, we, there is potential to be see some fantastic attacking play, particularly with the speed in the front third at Newcastle this season. Absolutely. And, you know, not only with the pace, but as I've already already mentioned, they've got a natural goal scorer in Beckham Mikkeltadza. Now, he scored double figures last year in a team that, as Roy said, finished ninth. So if they have a better season, how many is he capable of scoring? Could it be a 20-goal a season? I think he's certainly got that potential. Um, and, you know, maybe because he's got a mate now, another Georgian fellow there that's, you know, that will help him settle in even further. He looked pretty settled, to be fair, last year. I, I think that the big question, and, you know, we talked about it at the start, who replaces Daniel Pena? Because he was the provider of a lot of those assists, double figures in terms of assists last season. Can Piscopo or, or somebody else uh, provide that again this season? You, you know, strikers need ammunition. You, you're toothless without uh, service. They have to. Yeah. Piscopo has to deliver because yeah. that's their whole the crux of their team relies on that now, you know. Um, and Arthur Pappas has done a great thing. You, you just mentioned that he's brought he's, he's keeping his best players happy. Becca, you want to bring a maid in? Bring a maid in. He's good. Yeah, <laughs> hey, like, he might be really good he, as well. He, he, he probably know. he probably is really yeah. good, but he plays he plays his style of football, yeah. so that's perfect, you know. So that's that's clever. But uh, he, he has to deliver. Make no mistake, because Pena was exciting for everybody last year. And the way they played, it, there's a lot of really good, solid pros in that Jets team. Thurgate, O'Neill, Jenkinson, all these guys. But nobody that opens that back door like Pena did. So Piscopo needs to, to step up and be the player that we all hope he can be. Big expectations, but a big talent. The prospects. What's the verdict on the Jets this season? I think they can be top six. I'm not going to stick my, head, my neck on the block and say that they're going to definitely be top six. But I, I certainly think they've got that potential. As we talk today you know we always are made to look like fools because we haven't seen a lot of these teams and Newcastle of course they lost in the Australia Cup to, to Adelaide in the round of 32 so you know we've had one look at them in terms of a competitive game uh, pre-season friendlies are just that we don't really know until they get out on the park but I think looking at the squad overall uh, f their first four games, uh, and I talk about this mini league ahead of the World Cup because there are six matches and then we, we take the break. Newcastle got four of their first six all in New South Wales. They start off with the derby against the Mariners. I think all their fixtures, and I haven't got them all in front of me, but I have checked them, they're all potentially winnable. Um, so if they can make a good start, then you know that will, that will breed some confidence. And there's no doubt Arthur Pappas, I think, is a very good coach, potentially. I think he's got some quality in his squad, but they've got to put it all together. There's the, the, you can't have another season, as Roy said, of people going, oh, they play great football. Yeah, but they finished ninth. You, you've got to get results. So, you know, th this is the acid test for Arthur and the Jets this season. And the verdict? I think they'll be a top six team. I, I'll put my neck on the block for it. I think they will be. <laughs> You're brave, I, man, I think, Roy. I think they will be. Where did, they, where did they put it all together all the time? That's, that's what we have to have resolved for us this year. But... Uh, I think they've got enough on paper to yeah, be a top six team. Well, they'll be good to watch, you think. Will the results come? Time will tell. Newcastle Jets top six, potentially, from our experts here this season. Can't wait to watch them.